2010, my friends and family encouraged me to enter the Portfolio Showcase at the SCBWI Los Angeles Conference for Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. I was really nervous because I didn't have any art training, I didn't have a formal portfolio, but I was rooming with my illustrator friend Becca Gladney who said, you know, you should really enter this. Your art's great. I think you should give it a shot. And my sister encouraged me, and my husband encouraged me, and my friend Beckett, she helped me put together my very first portfolio. She also made me this gorgeous portfolio cover. Isn't this awesome? And I remember the night before the showcase, she had brought out, she had brought printouts of the ones she thought were my strongest and we spread them out on the hotel room floor and I remember thinking, oh, this is going to be so embarrassing, but she said, no, we can do it. And together we worked to put together my first portfolio and guess what? I ended up winning two awards. One was the Mentorship Award for Illustrators in which um, six of the portfolios were chosen by experts in the field to show promise. And the other one that I won was, the other one I won, uh, was the Honor Award, which was not the top award, but one of two runners up. And on that panel of judges was a publisher at Simon & Schuster, Justin Chanda. And he was also an editor. And he asked me, are you interested in illustrating I'm Bored, Michael Ian Black's new picture book? I love your art, I think it'd be perfect. And he asked Michael, and Michael said yes, and he waited for my answer, and I said, yes, of course. And that became my first picture book project that I illustrated. See, there's my name here. So I learned one really important thing, two important things. One was never give up. It may seem like nothing's happening for you, like you're just running in the same place, and you know, like the cartoons, running, 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 not going anywhere, but you never know when your foot's going to hit the right place and you're going to zoom off. And the other really important thing is you want to be grateful for the family and friends around you who are supporting and encouraging you. I have been doing a lot of sewing. I used to know how to sew, but I had forgotten how to use my sewing machine, but I decided, you know what, I want to make some masks. And I had some fun fabrics, so I've been making a lot of masks for my family and friends. I have also been learning a program called Adobe Premiere Pro, which lets me edit videos, and I've been posting them to my YouTube channel. I've been posting read-alouds and activities, and I've also launched a new series called Ask Me to Ask, in which children's book creators answer questions they have chosen themselves. I have also been making music. I have been playing the flute, my penny whistle, the keyboards. I have also been playing a lot of harp. And I love my Celtic harp because no matter what I play, it just sounds really, really pretty, even when I'm making mistakes. I've also been making art. I love working with found object art, either broken crayons or things I see on tables or coffee stains. I love found object art. And I have been doing a lot of reading. Here are just a few of the books that I've been enjoying lately. For me, the most difficult part is learning that it's okay to make mistakes and not be perfect when you're working on the first draft. Quite a lot of the times I'll be writing away and I'll be thinking, oh, this is terrible, no one's going to want to read this. Why am I doing this? I just want to start again. But then I remind myself it's okay not to be perfect the first time or the second time or third time. I just want to get the story written and then I can go back and revise. A lot of times I'll do this revision with help. My critique group or my editor or someone else I trust with my writing. But the 
biggest thing I've learned is not to be afraid to make mistakes the first time. This also applies to my um, illustration as well. The best part, I would say, is when I hear from young readers. Dear Debbie, I love your book because it reminds me about myself sometimes, and when it's about me, it makes me want to read more. From Ethan. This letter makes me so happy, and I put it up on my office wall so that when I get stressed about work stuff, I can go over, read the letter, and remind myself of what's really important. I get my inspiration from all different places, but one of the main things that inspires me is reading. The more I read, all different things, picture books, middle grade, chapter books, young adult books, nonfiction, fiction, all different kinds of reading. The more I read, the more I want to write and draw. One of my biggest inspirations in terms of illustrating is my sister, Ruth Owe. She is awesome and so are her books. I had a lot of favorite books as a child, but one of my favorites was Swimmy by Leo Leone. I just love that book for so many reasons, partly the art, which was amazing, but also because of all the emotions that the book made me feel. There was one spread I especially remember that kind of made me feel scared and a little bit alone, but reading the book um, all the way to the end made me realize I could get through those emotions. And in the end, it was just a good story. So Swimmy remains one of my all-time favorite books from when I was a child. I've also always really enjoyed drawing underwater scenes and fish and ocean creatures, which is one reason I really enjoyed illustrating Sea Monkey and Bob, written by Aaron Reynolds. I think I would love to be quarantined with Potato. I know the potato's kind of crabby sometimes, but it's kind of interesting, and he has a crusty sense of humor. So, yeah, I think the potato also, I would want the potato to read aloud from one of his books, because that way I could see what his voice sounded like. So, the potato. I just hope I don't get too hungry, because I also know a lot of potato recipes. My music group was invited to give a concert in Germany. Truth or lie? I created a comic strip based on my life. Truth or lie? I figured out a way to add myself as a character in Animal Crossing. Truth or lie? So any guesses? Which one of those was the lie? So my music group, Urban Tapestry, was invited to give a concert in Germany. It wasn't a rock concert, but we got to play in a castle, which was really awesome. And look, all of us are all dressed up in costume. Yes, I actually did create a comic strip based on my life. It's called My Life in a Nutshell. I created several other comics, including one about an avid fan waiting in line for the Lord of the Rings movies. I remember how excited I was when I found that Weta were fans of my comic, and they even sent me free stuff. As you might have guessed, I never did figure out a way to add myself to Animal Crossing. However, I did figure out how to make customized clothing. So look, I figured out a way to create an outfit for my avatar that is the same or almost the same as a little girl in I'm Bored. I live in terror that a publisher might someday ask me to illustrate a book that features horses because I can't draw horses. Or at least my horses have no resemblance to real life horses. They look more like, I don't know, mutant, anteater, rat, cat things, sort of. I would draw one for you now, except you would probably start laughing so hard you would fall over and might hit your head and I don't want you to hurt yourself. So that's my random fact. 
I have two main pieces of advice for young aspiring creators. One is to not try to be so perfect with your first drafts, whether it's writing or illustration. Do not be afraid of making mistakes because if you're trying to be perfect the first time, then you're going to be too afraid to experiment and you won't grow as a creator. Keep a notebook. You don't have to show anybody. Scribble on it all the time. My other piece of advice is to read. Read constantly. Read voraciously. Read everything. If you like a book, then think about why you liked it. And if you didn't like a book, then that's okay. Think about why you didn't like it, and maybe you can use that to improve your own writing. So my next book is Gerpel and Preen, a Broken Crayon Cosmic Adventure, which is written by Linda Sue Park and illustrated by me. And it's coming out from Simon & Schuster on August 25th, 2020. I am very, 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 very excited about this book because I have loved Broken Crayon Art forever. And Linda Sue Park, she's a Newbery medalist, and she wrote this story because she liked my Broken Crayon Art. I love the story. I had so much fun working on it, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So now I am going to show you how I draw the two main characters from the new picture book, Gerpel and Preen, A Broken Crayon Cosmic Adventure, written by Linda Sue Park and illustrated by me. I remember when I first heard the names that Linda Sue came up with, Gerpel and Preen. It took me a couple of seconds and I realized, oh, it's purple and green, but with the first letters mixed up. And I love that. And then I started thinking about, well, what should the characters look like? Should Gerpel be purple or should Gerpel be green? Because her name is sort of a mix of the two. One reason I had so much fun drawing these two robots is because their personalities are so different. What I'm drawing now is Gerpel. She is angsty. She panics a lot. Things are going wrong. We're doomed. We're doomed. So when drawing Gerpel, I wanted to make sure that her limbs were long enough that there were enough bits that could be flailing around because she flails a lot when she panics. Linda Sue's manuscript mentioned that Gerpel had three eyes. So I experimented about where I wanted to put the third eye. Should it be on top of Gerpel's head? Should it be in a row of three eyes across the front. In the end, I decided to put the third eye on her chest. Another decision I had to make was how to draw Gerpel's hands. I didn't want to draw human hands because she was a robot, but I also had to make sure her hands, or her robot clamps, were such that she could easily break crayons because that was an important action she did throughout the story. And you know what? I think I'm going to turn this into a broken crayon drawing. So what I usually do when I create these is I make the drawing first and then I break the crayon afterward. And to make it look more like um, the object or creature is coming out of the crayon, I usually add this, I call it a whoosh. And it makes it look more like the creature is coming out of the crayon itself. Then I break the crayon, which is always very satisfying and also feels wrong, but satisfying. <laughs> Let's see, how should I put this? Yeah, that looks better. And I will glue that, uh, I'll glue that later. When I first began making these broken crayon drawings, I always posted with the saying, you never know what will come out of a broken crayon. And of course, when I was posting these, I never imagined that the answer would someday be a picture book. A picture book is going to come out of these broken crayon drawings. So now I'm drawing Preen, and she is the smaller of the two robots in the picture book. In contrast to Gerpel, Preen is calm and more organized. In place of complaining and panicking about all the things that need to be done, she actually goes about the business of doing them. So Preen has a big bow on the top of her head that can spin around like a propeller and lift her up because I wanted her to be able to fly around, which would make things more fun to look at, and she could repair the rocket. She also has extendable arms under those arm flaps that can come out when she wants to, and that way she could pick up objects and move crayons and make repairs to the rocket. And ta-da! 
you never know what will come out of a broken crayon. Like Gerpel and Preen, the two main characters of Gerpel and Preen, a broken crayon cosmic adventure by Linda Sue Park and me, coming out from Simon & Schuster this August 25th. I have lots of broken crayon activities at deboe.com slash broken hyphen crayon. Some educators use Where Are My Books as a way of introducing the concept of libraries to the youngest readers. I also have teacher's guides available for each one of these books, and each classroom guide is designed for students in preschool through third grade, offering activities to help teachers integrate these books into English language arts, math, science, and social studies curricula. Art and drama are also used as teaching tools throughout these guides. For Sam and Eva, which is about creativity and cooperation, I also have extra activities such as how to write the word friend in Japanese. I've also been thrilled to see educators and librarians do creative collaboration with their young readers after reading Sam and Eva. I'm Bored, I'm Sad, and I'm Worried are three picture books written by Michael Ian Black that I illustrated. Reading these books can help jumpstart conversations about difficult topics. It also helps children realize that it's okay to feel the way they feel, and it helps to sometimes talk about it. Take sadness, for example. As Michael Ian Black says, we all feel sad sometimes. When we do, it's good to know we have people, or potatoes, in our lives who won't think any less of us for feeling the way we feel and who will still love us no matter what. You can find many more ideas on how to use my books with your young people at home or at schools by going to my website, debbioi.com, and looking for the teacher's guides at my Print Ready archives, as well as my home learning section. Keep reading, keep writing, and keep making art. And I look forward to someday seeing your books on the bookshelves. <music>